Hello and welcome to the EduTalk series hosted by Biotone, Biotone EduPartner Program and massage industry experts. With the challenges continuing to face massage schools, students and practicing therapists, the EduTalk series continues to support virtual learning during this time of COVID and its variants and supports building massage community by connecting you with industry experts who share their knowledge and expertise on topics not only for class discussion, but career success. Tonight's expert is Drew Freeman, a board certified massage therapist with over 20 years experience. He's also an approved CE provider and author and founder of Learn to Tape. Drew's degree is in sports medicine from the University of South Florida, where he also served as an athletic trainer. Let's listen and learn as Drew demystifies the world of kinesiology taping. He'll discuss the history and the theory, function and properties, scientific and practical applications, and clinical integration. He'll explain how taping is an effective tool to improve patient compliance and outcomes, especially when clients defer treatment due to COVID. Lastly, he'll address your questions surrounding kinesiology taping. And please feel free to chat your questions during Drew's presentation. He'll answer them at the end of the evening. And when we get ready for chat, uh, Drew would like to make it interactive. So uh, at that point, we'll ask you to turn on your uh, video and unmute yourselves and the Q&A will be more interactive. Again, feel free to chat questions if you prefer not to be on screen and we'll address those as well. And with that, thank you again for joining us and here's Drew. Thanks, Drew. Here you thanks, go. Thanks, I appreciate it. Welcome everybody. Uh, thanks so many people for showing up here. This is great on a Tuesday night. I'm so happy to have everybody here. Um, I hope I can share some information with you that uh, Gets you a little bit excited about kinesiology taping. So I'm going to share my screen with you here. Hopefully this works. We tried it before and it seems to come okay. Everybody can see that, I hope. Uh, I can't see you nodding. So I'll assume that Danelle will chime yes. in if uh, people can't see anything. So welcome. Um, so I've been doing these, you know, kinesiology taping now for, oh, I don't know, 20 plus years or so. Um, and Oftentimes I give these webinars or live presentations and I talk to a lot of people. I've been doing it for so long that so some of this of you people be, being on here might sound, some of this might be redundant to you, um, but I hope I still give you some information that's new and um, interesting as well. So just bear with me as we go along. And if you have questions, just let me know. Um, so what we'll do today for this, you know, about a half hour, I guess or so a time, we're gonna kind of do a, a quick flyby of uh, kinesiology tape and what it's all about. Uh, where it came from, where it started, um, doc, talk about Kenzo Kase, and we'll talk about different properties of the tape, how to use the tape, where the scientific evidence lies within the using the tape, and then if we have time, hopefully I can show you a video or two of some applications on how to perform some of these applications based upon what we've come up with with the taping. Um, so just as far as the history and theory of it, it basically, you know, kinesiology taping started basically around the 70s by Dr. Kenzo Kase. Um, he was a chiropractor in Japan that was looking for basically a better way to provide some long-term care for his patients. So he developed this kinesiology tape. Um, basically, it's been around longer than you realize. I think a lot of people see it now and they're like, oh, this is the newest stuff that's out there. And, you know, I said 19, I was born in 1970, so it's technically considered vintage, I guess now. Um, but it didn't really make it here until... Um, in 1995 or so, I was an athletic trainer at South Florida. We were at a national convention and they brought a bunch of this tape to the convention. And um, we didn't know what the heck this stuff was. It was just uh, this, you know, blue and black and beige and uh, pink tape that we just saw that was really stretchy, but we really didn't know too much about it. So we just kind of threw it in with all the other tape. Nobody showed us how to use it. We just figured it was whatever, just another 
um, roll of tape for the drawer, so to speak. It wasn't until later on in like 08 where the Beijing Olympics came along and you started seeing a lot of the athletes wearing all this different colored tape and people were like, what the heck is that? And, you know, in 08, when Kerry Walsh wore it for the volleyball team, obviously volleyball, uh, beach volleyball players don't wear a ton of clothing to begin with. So the tape is pretty obvious. Um, however, what you wouldn't know, which I kind of a fun little fact, um, in 08, uh, Kinesio sent over about 5,000 rolls of kinesiology tape over there. And the first person in the U.S. to win an Olympic medal was a fencing uh, medalist. And they were covered basically from head to toe in kinesiology tape, but you don't see it because they're all covered up. But the point is that there are athletes and lay people who are always wearing kinesiology tape. You just don't see it unless they're wearing uniforms and outfits just as, such as this. But that's when it got, got on TV. That's when it really started to get, gain its popularity. and People started to see what, you know, what's this stuff all about. And if the pros are wearing it, I want to start wearing it as well. And it started to really hit the training rooms um, from that point forward. So, you know, how does this work? What is it, what is it all about? And, you know, there's so many damn brands out there. Which, which is the best brand? Well, for starters, I own a company called Learn to Tape. Um, the reason why we came up with Learn to Tape is because that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to teach people how to use kinesiology tape. I didn't care if you use TheraBand kinesiology tape, rock tape, kinesio, uh, kinesio tape, KT tape, spider tech tape. You see all the brands that are there. I didn't care which brand you used. I'm driver's ed. I'm going to teach you how to drive a car. I don't care what kind of car you drive. And from that standpoint, that allows us to get our education out there to our people and to our students so they can best understand the, the use of the tape and not worry about, well, you know, I can only do this application if I have this brand of tape. And if I'm going to get success with my patient, I should only be using rock tape or kinesio tape. No, I don't care. I, they're all pretty similar. And we're going to talk about that in a second here. But ultimately, the way I describe it is that if you were a runner, you wouldn't go running in a pair of Nikes one day and a, and a pair of Adidas the next day. You find a pair of shoes that are working for you. And that's what you use to run in. And that's what you use consistently. But somebody else might say, oh, Nike's give me blisters. I'm going to use New Balance. And that's what I use. So they're all good tapes that are out there, good sneakers that are out there. But ultimately, you got to stay consistent with it because you're going to get different outcomes each time if you start using different brands of tape. So think about it from that perspective. OK, um, my biggest thing that we tell people is just be careful where you're getting your tape from. Like I said, there's rock tape, TheraBand tape, Kinesio tape, KT tape. I could go on for hours and days in this stuff. And you can probably find 99% of the stuff on Amazon. The question is, the dude on Amazon you're buying it from might be storing it in the trunk of his car. So you don't know what kind of tape you're getting. You might think the rock tape is the best tape out there, but if it's been through like some summer days in the trunk of his car, you might end up getting a roll of tape that's, that doesn't stick or it gets irritating and there's a problem. You're going to blame rock tape for it, not the dude with the trunk full of tape. So my best thing I could tell you is I, I say go to a massage warehouse, go to script, you can go anywhere you want, but I would say a place like that that you know and trust, get your products from them so you know consistently whether you're buying whatever brand of tape it is that you choose, you're at least getting um, tape that's been stored properly and kept the right way. Um, when they make their tape, a lot of the brands will put different things on the backs of their tape to differentiate themselves from the other brands. Um, but on the front of the tape, as you can see, you wouldn't know the difference unless they put labeling on there like rock tape does or KT tape does. Again, these are all made in similar factories over, overseas, we'll say. Um, the question is, how much money is the company putting into the tape to improve their product? Do you want to just put like generic grids on the back or do you want to put your branding and logo on the back? Ultimately, that's up to them. When it comes out of those factories, though, you want to make sure that they're... Um, the, they're using a high quality acrylic adhesive. And at the same time, they're also um, not adding any extras to the tape that aren't necessary in terms of the thickness of the weight of the cotton. And we're going to talk about that right here in a second. So you'll see that a good piece of tape, when you pull, out the, pull it off the roll, I don't know if you have any there with you. I have, I have a roll of tape here as well. But when you pull it off the roll, you shouldn't see any of the little frays that you see in the bottom picture there. At the end of that means the wharf and the weft weren't really done at the right angles and it's not a very tightly wound roll of tape. So that's one indicator that you've bought like a really bad generic brand of tape. Um, the good ones won't fray at the edges there as you see, okay? 
So all tape is designed, if it's true kinesiology tape, all tape, kinesiology tape is designed pretty much the same way. It's designed to mimic uh, the elasticity of our skin. Okay, so once the tape is on your skin, because of the lightness and of the weight of the tape, after about five or 10 minutes, your brain doesn't calculate there's actually anything on your skin. So it doesn't recognize that until you move. But depending upon the tension you put on the tape, that's when the, ca the tape capabilities will start to kick in. Um, it can stretch from either from 40 to 100% of its resting length. So a lot of tape is applied in the factory with what they call a 10% paper off tension. So when it comes off of those big rollers and lay down on the paper, paper backing, there's a slight stretch on it. So when you take the tape off, it's already at 10%. But I, I don't use that as an example necessarily what I'm taping. We'll just say all tape is zero tension once you pull the paper off. And that's when we're stretching from. And we're gonna talk about that when we get into the, the clinical applications here as well. Um, you'll see that uh, the tape is pretty much made of cotton, but there's also some rayon, nylon, or spandex in some of the different brands. And depending upon what company you're dealing with, they like to put a little bit more or less in those in there, but they're usually about 93, 94% cotton and the rest is a nylon or a spandex or something else in there. Um, that's pretty typical, pretty standard on most brands of tape. They'll say they're water resistant. Some will say they're waterproof. They're not, if they're not waterproof, because they won't breathe. If they don't, if they're, if they're waterproof, that means there's no, there's no air getting in or out of that tape. And the way those tapes, I'll go back to a couple of slides here, if I can. No, I don't know if I can go back to it. Anyway, um, you need to have the air coming through there so moisture can wick out of the, out of the tape as you're wearing it um, athletically. Um, water resistant basically means that once you apply the tape, the acrylic adhesive, if applied correctly to the dry, cleaned area, will stay on while they're in water, in a shower. Um, it'll stay on for three to five days when applied correctly. Um, majority of tape is latex-free. Um, I don't know too much tape that is latex-free. Hypoallergenic, um, for the most part they are, but everybody's got some sort of a a small little allergy to something maybe. So what we recommend for people who may worry about having a latex allergy or maybe um, a resistance to any sort of adhesive is that we actually recommend you put on a test strip in a, on, like a, on like the side of your arm, or side of your, um, your chest or something like that in a sensitive area of skin where you can place it on there for a day or two, leave it there and then see if you get any sort of reaction skin wise from the tape. And if there's no reaction, then you can go on to do like more of elaborate taping. But just to be safe, you do like a little test patch first. Um, when you use the tape, as I mentioned, there's an acrylic adhesive in the tape. So you, once you lay that tape down, you need to activate that adhesive and rub it briskly either with your hand over the tape or the paper backing over the tape, just to activate that adhesive before you're taking that tissue off the stretch. And that way you know that the tape is gonna be staying on there the way you way you activate um, applying it for it. Um, the wave-like pattern that's in the tape as well. Uh, see if I can show you one on here. Actually, I'll cut this piece off here for you, make it a little bit more interactive. The wave-like pattern that's on the tape. Let's see if this works here. Uh, let's see. This pattern that's on that tape there. Uh, is it working? Maybe. Anyway, those waves kind of allow the tape while it's on your skin because the tape is only going to stretch in this direction. It's not going to stretch this way but it's gonna move with your skin as you tape, as you move around with it because of those wave-like features in there as well, all right? And then the tape itself should last for three to five days. Again, when it doesn't last for three to five days, it's typically not the tape that is at fault. It's typically the applicator's error. Um, and we'll go over the reasons of why there are certain errors, but typically if the tape's not st staying for three to five days and the applicator is doing a great job with it, they probably bought it from the trunk of a car from somebody on Amazon and it was the tapes problem at the end of it. Um, I can't seem to advance to my next slide here, Donnell. I don't know why. I'm kind of stuck on that. So, oh, now everything's moving. Here we go. So it moves like a rubber band, stretches up and down and it recoils and that's the beauty of the tape. And that's what we're gonna use it for. And when we apply that tape, um, you apply that tape to the stretched area of the skin and that's what's gonna provide your lift and everything with the skin. Now, as we've shown on there, like this is TheraBand kinesiology tape on here. Um, there's different brands of tape that have their different bells and whistles to them. The reason why I'm showing you this TheraBand kinesiology tape is not because I, I'm a huge supporter and fan of their tape, which I am, but I don't care what tape you use, like I said at the beginning. However, 
just like riding a bike, sometimes you need a little training wheels and a little assistance. And this is where TheraBand has done an excellent job of creating a kinesiology tape that's great for therapists and for new practitioners. They have these hexagon patterns that are on the tape. And as you see, uh, as it's diagrammed here, as you stretch the tape, you'll be putting a stretch on the tape. And again, I can do it with this one here. All right. So if you see this piece of tape and that big yellow hexagon, there's the middle of my tape. As I stretch this hexagon and it becomes symmetrical, I know that I'm at 50% tape tension without having to figure out the way it's originally taught, which is you go to 100, you back off to 50, and you're guessing. This has an indicator on there that shows you 50%, and the smaller hexagon that's in the top right here will show you 25%. So I think that's a really cool feature that TheraBand has added to their tape. Other tape brands have added other features to their tapes, such as uh, SpiderTech has their pre-cut tapes. Not a huge fan of pre-cuts. Um, they are effective when they can be applied correctly for the correct injury. Um, however, there's a lot of mishandling of this tape. As you can see, this once you take that paper off, this tape becomes very flimsy and it's hard to handle. And they have it all as one size fits all. And if you look at the gentleman's shoulder here on the right, you know, for the shoulder application, which I'm not sure exactly which, whether it's shoulder impingement, shoulder bursitis, um, I, I don't know what he's got going on there, but the application is for your shoulder. But I, if I put that piece of tape on my wife's shoulder, it would probably end up on her other side. So these aren't the best, I think, tools necessarily for a first time applicator or a first time kinesiology taping uh, person, but there's something that you can get used to over time once you understand how the tape functions. Other tapes such as mobility tape, they will infuse their tape with a topical analgesic like a menthol or some sort of um, um, pain relieving solution in there, or like capsaicin, whatever they put into there. Again, kinesiology tape is not designed to do anything other than provide sensory input once it's applied properly to the skin. The additional benefits of an analgesic could be found with a with a, like a spray on or biofreeze or something like that. But when you put it in the tape, you're creating another degree of difficulty with this application. Then there might become an irritation after a while. You know, anybody who's used any sort of capsaicin or menthol products for heat or cold knows that sometimes that can get really cold or it can get really hot and create some irritation and some itching. And if you add that to some heat with some tape um, during activity, it can become ir pretty irritating. So I've steered clear of any tapes that actually have any of those sort of bells and whistles added to it. But the bells and whistles I like from um, TheraBand with the, with the indicators on there seem to work really well. And again, I don't know why I'm not sharing, why I'm not spacing here. I'm not going to the next slide. I, everything wants to slow down on me here. Let's see what's going on here. Now I'm gonna go to this. All right, let's go into the primary functions of the tape. Jump back into there and see if we can get this to come up here. So kinesiology tape works in a lot of different ways. Um, primarily, I think its best function is through the musculoskeletal system, uh, lymphatic system, and the central nervous system. Those are the primary ways you're going to be using kinesiology tape, especially in a, in a massage therapy kind of practice. Um, you've probably seen, if you've seen used the tape before, you can the tape from origin to insertion or insertion to origin. That's the way Kase originally um, intended the tape to use for muscle applications. There really isn't a lot of science to back that from an evidence-based standpoint that if you tape from insertion to an origin, that's going to relax or reduce the tone in the muscle and, ha and actually have, it have an input in the muscle that's going to decrease that tone or cellular cell activity. Or if you tape it from origin to insertion, you're going to activate that tissue even more that might be inhibited and generate some more energy into that tissue. They really haven't been able to show that through scientific evidence. However, I've been doing this a long time. Whenever I tape somebody, depending upon their condition, whether they have some you know, inhibited traps or some you know, a, a strained hamstring or whatever it might be, I will tape according to the Kase's original theory of insertion to origin or origin to insertion, depending upon what I'm looking to do. Um, and I'll get a good result from it. However, there are times when I've taped them and I should get the result I'm looking for and nothing happens. I get no result at all. I tape it the other way and I get a result. So trial and error sometimes, you know, it's not an exact science and, you know, we're still trying to generate more evidence. There's not a lot of research that gets done on kinesiology taping. 
Um, that's a bad thing. Um, but at the same time, we need more research, I think, in other areas that are a little bit more important than just tape. So I'm okay with that too. Um, it helps with the lymphatic system. It helps with swelling. And this is this is how I got into taping to begin with, actually. It was with my, my mom had MS. And for, uh, I don't know, so she had about 35, 37 years or so. Um, but she had a lot of swelling and edema in her lower legs. And when I first started using kinesiology tape, um, I did some lymphatic or swelling applications on her lower extremities in the first couple of nights. And she lost like three inches of circumference around her uh, lower leg just overnight. So I, I thought this stuff was amazing. That could help so many people um, beyond just athletes, obviously, for, with people with uh, any sort of, sort of swelling conditions like that, maybe post mastectomy patients where they're all wrapped up and they're bound up after their surgeries. Tape sticks a lot better. It's a lot less cumbersome. As the swelling is reduced, a lot of those bandages will fall off. Um, they can't shower with the bandages on everything, so they have to be rewrapped. But with the tape, if they're taped properly, um, you can get a lot of great results that could be long lasting because the tape can stay on 24 seven. And, and as I said, you know, three to five days when applied correctly. So I think from a, from a usage standpoint, you know, if you into a manual lymphatic drainage is, is some of the work that you do, um, or if you just done some, you know, some pretty deep work on somebody in general, and you want to just kind of get some good circulation post massage on there an application of a, a swelling application post therapy is a great way to reduce any sort of residual soreness as well. And last, and I should probably put it first, I guess, it's, you know, sensory theory that basically the tape influences free nerve endings in the skin. You know, ultimately, the brain, the, the, the tape is a communicator to the brain. You know, we know that pain is an output of the brain 100% of the time. So the brain is basically determining what's going on wherever it is in the body, and it will determine whether it should, you know, provide, you know, a pain or a danger response to that area or if everything's fine we can use the tape to change the message that the brain is receiving from that area. So if somebody has got whiplash and you're applying the tape on there and the tape is you know, providing a, a relaxation response to the tissues in the area, it's providing some good support. Uh, mentally, the patient is feeling a lot better and convinced that their, their neck is more relaxed. That's gonna tone down and downregulate all that pain information that's being sent to those areas there. And that's where I, I think the tape is, you know, between the, uh, the lymphatic drainage and the sensory input that it can provide are two key uh, key components of being a great pain tool um, when helping your patients through tough times. Um, let's skip that for now so we can get into this stuff of flying along here. So Kase's original theory from this, and this is what we pulled out of all of our data that we that we started to pull together for Learn to Tape, is that he came up with two ideas. The tape is designed to either lift their skin or to target sensory receptors, okay? Those are the two components we're trying to get most out of. Um, lifting the skin is a something similar that happens, you know, when we have a compressed space in our lymphatic area. So when that, in that interstitial tissue space, when all that metabolic waste is dumped into those areas, into those capillaries, we need something to push the tissue out. And muscular contractions will obviously push lymph out that way. But if there's too much swelling, you're not going to get as much compression in there because of the swelling. But if you get the tape on there, the tape can provide a little bit of a lift to that skin, see that the slide works, a little bit of a lift to the skin. And then as it pumps up and down, it's gonna pump fluid out of that area as well. I've seen this work so many different ways for so many different types of injuries, whether it's from uh, just something as simple as a whiplash injury or uh, a complete knee reconstruction, um, it, it, the tape's amazing. So what I've done here is that I showed a, a little bit of an example of, a, of an application of tape that I put on my wife's lower back. And you see these wrinkles here. These are little convolutions. Now the skin, the, the tape is not coming up off the skin. It's actually pulling and lifting the skin. The key to this though, is that when I put the tape onto her, I took a 10 inch piece of tape, put her tissue on a stretch. So I took her erectors and I bent her at the waist, stretched that skin over the erectors, laid down my 10 inch piece of tape with no tension, like zero to 10% tension. When she stood back up again, you see these convolutions and these ripples. If I applied it with 50% tension, you probably see only about half of those ripples. If I applied it 100% tension, you'd see no lift whatsoever. So the difference is the, the, the greater the, the tape tension, the greater the tape tension, the less the lift. The lesser the tape tension, the greater the lift. That's basically the key that we came up with 
when we were looking through all these different videos and under, trying to understand everything. This is a little bit of evidence that we show. This is actually um, my business partner, Rick's son's uh, leg post-surgically after he had his uh, complete knee reconstruction. He was a 25 year old soccer player, had a complete knee reconstruction. You can see where the tape was laid down on those lines there where we lifted up the tape. That means that when we laid the tape down, this, was, this area was all bruised, all the swelling had come down his leg. When we put the tape on there and, and three days later lifted it back up, you can see where the swelling has moved out and the discoloration has moved out. And now he's back. And now we want to put the tape over the other areas to get the rest of that out of there. That to me, that's, that's about as best evidence as you can find that the tape will move waste out of the interstitial spaces in there. That I don't, I don't need to go into a lab and, and take a three-year study to figure that out. This is the enough evidence that I need that we have great success taping people with this. All right, there's Jesse's knee. If you can actually see up there, it's a little shadow, but that's how much edema he lost. That brace was locked onto his quad when he went to bed the night before, and that's how much swelling went down in his leg with the tape application that we did went, that basically went from hip uh, to the bottom of his foot. All right, and then of course, you know, all the different sensory re receptors in the skin is what that, what that tape is targeting. And, you know, whether it's through thermal applications, whether, whether it's through mechanical me mechanisms, through mechanical touch, um, whatever it might be, that tape is gonna impact all these different levels of sensory input in the skin and have an impact on how the message is being received to the brain so the brain can determine what its output is going to be. So again, it's just an impulse. It's all it's really trying to do is just create a large impulse so the brain can change its story of what's coming back down to it. And I, I, like I said, this is a flyby. I am cruising through this stuff. I wish I could expand upon every little bit that I'm talking about here. We do more so in our course and on our live work classes, but I just want to give you guys a quick flyby. The handout that I gave you goes into greater detail as to the, some of the stuff I'm talking about. So don't feel like you should be jotting down a million notes here either. Um, but ultimately, we, we know this about the tape, and a lot of people ask this about the tape. Does it really work from a scientific standpoint? Is it it's a sham? Is it in your head? I don't, I don't go into those debates with people. I know what evidence is out there, and I know we need more of it. Um, but I know the evidence that we do have out there is still promising. But more than anything else, I take that evidence and I take it into my practice. And when I take it into my practice, and I take that evidence based upon the response that I get from my patients, with what they're experiencing from the applications and the outcomes I get, that's where I get my evidence-based practice from. Okay, that's it's. This is not to say that like if I have a patient that comes in and says, "Oh, I, you know, I, I tore my calf," and I tape them up and they walk out of there with no pain, I can say tape works for all torn calves. That's not how this works, obviously. I take it from a patient-by-patient -patient, um, practical standpoint, and I apply my previous experiences to these situations. And based upon the science, I understand. Based upon my experience and my anecdotal events I've had over the years, and based upon the outcomes I get, outcomes I get is where I determine if this was a value for this particular patient. Okay. Um, obviously, it's popularity in sports has gotten big, and that's where people see it all the time, and they want to have the different colors and stuff on their arms. Um, some athletes won't wear the tape during games, but they'll only wear them for rehab because they feel during games it might be displaying to a, uh, their opponents that they're injured. So they don't want to have that revealing, whereas others, they like to have it displayed on there because it gives them the confidence that they need to kind of, you know, compete in their sport, whatever it is. All right. Let me get, I'm going to pull away from this now here and go down to a couple of applications here because I want to get into the questions and ain't assume it. So we have some basic cuts here. Okay. These are the basic cuts that we use for taping. There's other cuts as well. But these three, the first three here, the I cut, the Y cut, and the fan cut are the primary cuts we use, especially in basic taping. Um, so what I'd like to do real quick here is just show you a quick video of, uh, I'm not sure which application I got up here. I think it's a uh, telephone. No, I think I got a, I'm gonna actually show you a calf injury first because we got the three different, um, it's not moving on here. Come on slides, come on slides. Finicky Dunnell. Let's see here. All right. Maybe we'll just jump right into that video if we get to it. Let's see. Hang on. All right. So these are some of the applications 
that we offer in our course just to kind of give you a breeze through that. But you can see this long piece here, that's an eye cut, eye cut, eye cut. So three eye cuts, one application, okay? This is a Y cut here, and this is an eye cut, okay? Eye cut, eye cut, eye cut. You know, so those are primarily the best, the cuts that we use. The X's are typically we'll use over joints um, for more advanced applications, but typically all you need to do for, for taping is to know how to, you know, round your corners on the eye cuts, split the difference on the Y cuts and make your tendrils on the, on the swelling applications. So what I'll do here, actually, I'm gonna show you a quick video. Uh, let's do PFPS, it's a fun one to do, it's just some straight eye cuts. Let's see if that works for us. So you can see here, we have different steps to our application. This is, this is one of the videos from our uh, certification course. And we jump in there with recommendations at the beginning for each one. And we have it color coded and uh, charted out so everyone can read easily. Very important to put the no tension on there. All right, so what I'll do now, because we're short on time here, it's already 6.37 or so. So now, why don't I throw this back to you? I'll stop 
uh, sharing the screen now. We can get some questions going here and we can figure out how much I, how, how, how confused I made everybody after all of this. Well, you have so much information to share. And um, I'd like to mention to people before we get into the Q&A and open up our video and, and sound that um, in tomorrow's follow-up email with the recording link, Drew has included a handout. Um, it's different from the PowerPoint presentation, but it's chock full of information. And at the end of it, there is also um, an offer that Drew has made to everyone for um, RSVPing to this class tonight. Um, why don't we turn everybody's video on and um, also your sound. I believe you can unmute yourselves and also turn on your video. We can, un yeah. we can unmute for, for when they have a question. How's that? That way it, it'll sound a little bit nicer. <laughs> okay. Well, we did have some chat questions come in. Go for it. And um, what has been your general experience with patients with scoliosis and taping? Um, hit or miss, to be honest. Uh, do you know the name of the person who asked the question? Xavier. Xavier, thank you for the question. Um, so yeah, it's been hit or miss. I've had decent success. It depends upon the severity of their scoliosis, but more importantly, it depends upon their dedication to staying with the program. Scoliosis is obviously a long-term sort of ongoing condition that, you know, one or two taping applications is never going to fix that problem. Um, I think what you will see in an initial application too, um, when done correctly, you will see some, they'll feel, experience some relief, um, but that might just be some temporary sensory relief that the tape is just applying. And then after a while, their body is not going to adapt to it anymore. Um, so it, it, it depends, I guess, is the, is the short answer on that. Um, give it a shot, but make sure you're just kind of writing down in your notes what you're doing for your taping when you do these scoliosis applications and what's working for you, what's not, and then kind of go on from there. But there is definitely no sort of cookie cutter, this is how you tape for scoliosis kind of thing. Okay. Okay, and Mylene uh, just made a comment. I have never heard, I have never heard of taping until my graduation from massage therapy school. Mm -hmm. Is that common that uh, taping is not necessarily addressed during, during you know, let's say initial training? Yeah, I mean, it, it is. It depends upon, you know, what the curriculum is for that particular school. I think, I know schools have a lot to cover in a short amount of time. Um, you're going to school for massage therapy, not kinesiology taping. Um, you, you know, they're probably not teaching you about electrical stim or far infrared therapy. So, uh, it's one of those things that I didn't really get into kinesiology taping until after massage school and until I started venturing out on my own, looking for other aspects of uh, modalities that I wanted to enter into my practice. So I'm not, I'm not necessarily surprised by that. I, I, if they're going to add anything back into massage school, it's probably gonna, like we talked about before, Donnell, more business courses. <laughs> um, the kinesiology taping stuff, you can take my course later on after you graduate. <laughs> <laughs> and then I get lots of information with your handout too. Um, yeah. Kathleen, who is on screen, um, asked, "Hi, you can unmute if you want to ask." Um, Please. Ask hi, Drew. hi, Drew. How are you? Good, Kathleen. Good. I was wondering how soon would you use the kinesio tape on someone after they had surgery? I saw you. It was very soon after that total knee. Um, yeah. And how close are you to the incision when you do it? I would think if yeah. it was on zero stretch, it wouldn't have a negative effect on their incision. Yeah. So, I, I mean, Jesse's leg, we did it basically the, the night that he came home from the hospital. Um, I've had elbow surgery a couple of times here and I do the surgery literally at the hospital. I taped myself when I was done. I was with the PT when I did it. What I typically will do is that I'll take a string of gauze and I'll put it along in the suture lines and lay that down first. So, because you don't want to have any of that tape crossing over any sutures for whatever the reason. The last thing you want to do is mess up what the surgeon just did. Um, so it is, it is very effective post-surgically right after, as long as the area is nice and cleaned. And obviously if, you know, like Jesse or with my elbow that we've shaved and cleaned the area post-surgically anyway, uh, pre-surgically anyway. Um, so it's just a matter of taking care of the incision site to make sure it's covered with gauze first. Okay, great. great. 
And, and Jim, I'm not sure if you want to unmute yourself, um, but Jim has asked, when I took a course for kinesiology taping, less is more for tension stretch of tape. Do you find that is true? Do you find that is true? Yes, 100% uh, Jim. So typically what I, what I, when I was an athletic trainer, more was more. <laughs> we, we were supposed to tape and strap it down and lock it down and splint it. With taping, it's less is more, less, less amount of tape and less tension of tape. Typically, I will never go beyond 50 or 60% of, of resting tape tension. Anybody who tapes beyond 50 or 60, they're not using kinesiology tape for its design purpose. That's not to say that the tape doesn't work for what they're trying to use it for, but it's designed basically to be about 50%. Beyond that, you're creating too much sensory input um, and it's, it's, it's gonna kind of negate the impact of the lift and the, and the pull of the tape. So stay, I would stay in those areas when all else, otherwise just layer 50% versus doing 100%, okay? Thank you. All right, I don't see Sandy Fritz up there, but- um, I see I Sandy. See, you see Sandy? <laughs> Hi, Sandy. <laughs> How are you? Um, my question is uh, scope of practice concerns and yep. what about credentialing? Is it absolutely necessary and can, can anybody do this? Good question. It's a, it, as you, you've been doing this a long time as I have longer actually. Um, it's, this is one of the things. I came up with a certification for kinesiology taping I don't know, seven or eight years ago, but there is no credentialing body. It's, 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 I don't want to say it's bullshit because I'm very proud of my course that I put together. And, and once you complete it, I, you are certified by us, but that does not mean that if you're not certified by me, that you're some sort of a, you know, a, a shark, a shark oil salesman or something like that. Basically what I believe in terms of scope of practice is that you should know what your state's laws are. Okay, every state is different. So definitely check in with your state to see where, where scoping falls into your scope of practice. But as far as using the tape and saying I'm certified or I'm credentialed or I use tape all the time, how much can I charge people if I'm not certified? If you're using the tape and it's effective and you're getting results from it, yes, why not? You can, you can absolutely do that, but know what you're doing with the tape. I have my course out there primarily because I want people to understand how the tape is designed to be used but I don't, and I get them certified, but I don't have this thing where you have to pay me every year to stay certified through me, where you have to continue to give me your money every year just, just so you can use my credentials. You get it, you use it, you're done, have fun with it. Obviously the only way you're gonna get better at any of this stuff is by practicing it. So if you don't use it for two years and you still put letters after your name that say you're certified, you're gonna be exposed pretty quickly when you get that patient that comes in that you don't know what to do with them because you haven't done it in two or three years. So I would check with your state primarily to see if taping is within your scope of practice. I know, for instance, in Georgia, it's, I think it's within your scope of practice, but you can't get CEs for any of the kinesiology taping workshops, kinesio included, any of those. So the question is, do you want to learn how to use kinesiology tape properly and apply it to your practice? Or are you looking for just something that is the, you know, that's, that's, fits into your, your pricing scheme so you can just charge more money for it. I, I like to use kinesiology taping because it, it's a nice compliance tool. It's a tool that extends the outcomes of my work. It allows me to help my patients learn how to tape themselves for their own little injuries down the line. So I use it as a tool of self-care. I use it for a tool compliance, um, but use it wisely. You know, obviously, you know, if, if you're helping your patient you know, with a massage technique or just a, a holding technique that you didn't learn in massage school and it works for them, that's a massage technique. Now you just, maybe you created it, maybe you made your own, but you don't need to be certified in it necessarily. Just know what you're doing with the techniques you're throwing out there. Excellent. Does that answer your question? Yep. Excellent yeah. answer. Thank you, Sandy. All right. Now I should know the next person's name, but this is her email. So... I feel like her name is Joy. Anyway, any contraindications or precautions on areas with any hardware implants such as plates and screws? Um, specifically to plates and screws like that, no, shouldn't have it too much of an issue. If anything, there's probably some scarring over those areas where there's plates and screws. So 
You can use the tape to definitely impact uh, the release of some of the scar tissue. Um, again, in conjunction with manual therapy, kinesiology taping is not going to, as a standalone modality, remove any sort of a great amount of scar tissue uh, scarring. Um, but as far as if you're going to be using it over, you know, you, you wouldn't be use, using uh, tape over like DVTs. You're not going to use tape um, over open wounds. You know, what is either Ben Franklin or Matthew McConaughey said, the only thing most uncommon is common sense. Um, <laughs> so I don't know who quotes these things on the internet anymore, but just use, apply a little common sense and know which, what, you know, if it, if it doesn't seem to me logically make sense to you, don't do it, you know? Like, like that's why I said the test patches are really important. Like I, we have a lot of prenatal patients that'll come through and um, I take my wife a lot during her pregnancies um, and after. Um, but before I did that, I would tape a test patch on her skin, even, even if I taped her two weeks earlier, because during the pregnancy, that's, the skin can stretch, can become more sensitive. Be aware of that stuff and always take the, take the time to do a little test first before you start doing any sort of an elaborate taping. Even with the swelling applications, um, Jesse was a seasoned athlete post-surgically had a ton of swelling, but I wasn't too concerned with him having a compromised lymphatic system um, at 25 years old and an NCAA you know, scholarship athlete. However, if I'm going to be working with, you know, my at the time 70 year old mother, I want to know what her lymphatic system is functioning like. And I don't want to start throwing this elaborate taping onto there where I'm going to be messing up different lymphatic channels, other, other places of her body. So I'm going to do some smaller stuff first before you get into the, the bigger things. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Um, Xavier, does your certification allow you to remove the hair or do you use other methods? Great question, Xavier. And th the short answer is it depends. Check on your scope of practice within whatever state you're in. However, what I like to do is that if somebody, you know, typically my male clients, but whatever, it, if somebody has hair in their legs that I feel is too long that the tape will not work because it's on there, I will hand them the trimmer. So here's the trimmer. I'll put a towel down the table, trim up and clean up the hair in this area while I prepare your tape. I let them do all that work. I tend not to trim the hair off of them for, for that, just that point, Xavier, is that I don't, I don't, the scope of practice in Massachusetts, I don't think is a, is a problem with that, but yeah. it's just one of those things that I want them to be comfortable removing that hair and be part of the process as well. Because, you know, especially with guys, they don't want to have like a one third of their leg half shaven. So I'll let them do it themselves. So they're the destruction of their own madness. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Tiffany, hi, Tiffany. Um, I'll read your question. Is that okay? Uh, is there a certain age limit of patients to stay under the skin elasticity issues? There's a certain, well, can you expand on that, maybe? Yeah. Yes, that actually came from um, the massage class that you see up there is actually my class. We're listening to it together. Great. Um, and they had a question if, you know, saying under the age of, you know, 65, if their skin starts to thin out and lose that elasticity, is there an age that you're looking at, like staying under for kinesio taping to work more effectively and not rip the skin when they're trying to take the tape off? No, I, th I think it comes down to the integrity of the skin, first and foremost, on the person, you know, so whether they're 16 or 60, you know, you have to do a test patch just to make sure that their, their skin can handle uh, the adhesive. The adhesive is pretty, is, it's, it's pretty gentle adhesive, um, but some people are more sensitive than others. I will say in the more elderly population, as skin gets thinner, you want to be careful of that as well. So again, doing a test patch, but when you're applying the tape for either a swelling, a joint, or a muscle application, we've broken it down into four applications for our, for our system, um, joint, muscle, swelling, um, and pain are our four applications. When you're doing it for pain, muscle, or swelling, the tissue is always on a stretch that's most comfortable for them. So, you know, if they stretch, if they do taping their calf, you put the tissue in the, the, the calf and the gastroc on a nice stretch. But if they're doing it, if we're taping a joint, joints don't like, we know that ligaments don't like to be stretched. So we're not going to be stretching that joint. We'll leave the joint in neutral position. So if you can put the tissue on a stretch in any of those positions comfortably for them, and they're not have any skin sensitivities, go for it no matter, the, regardless of the age. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. 
Sandy Fritz um, asks, um, oh, make sure the client knows how to remove the tape. Correct. So <laughs> excellent. So one of the things that we do in our in our certification is that we go through the process on, of in our certification. And one of the things that I have you do is that you have to send me a video of you doing two taping applications. OK, in that taping application, I'm not as concerned about your actual taping, seeing it and the, like the video production and the producer and the direct none of that stuff. I want to hear you telling the patient specifically what you're doing, why you're doing it and how it's going to work and then how to take it off at the end. That's part of your certification. So I know that you're delivering that right information to them. So again, when they, you show them how to take it off, whether it's in the shower, rolling in the direction of the hair, we have forms that they fill, that we have them fill out when they leave. So they have, in, have instructions to take home with them. You always want to prepare them for the little things that could create like a bad situation for them. Like the, the, sometimes the tape will get caught up on like the hairline or maybe a tendril might roll up and the patient might just think, oh, I'm just going to rip it off. Well, we want them to trim it, not rip it off. So you, you have to make sure that you're explaining it to them because they don't know. You know, their, their first thought is like, oh, it's pulling on my hair. It's coming off. It's not working. They'll rip it right off. Well, we know that the end has no tension on there. So that's not where all the work is being done anyway. It's being done in that therapeutic zone if we're taping their neck. So just teaching them to trim those different areas versus just take it right off is really important as well. Okay. Great. Um, Kathleen, I'm not sure if you want me to read this or you want to get unmute yourself again and share. Okay. Yeah, I just shared So I'll have clients use uh, a pretty good amount of olive oil to take the tape off, like mm -hmm. soak the area in olive oil and the tape ends up coming off. And then um, I had a fellow uh, lymphedema therapist told me she has someone put a coating of milk of magnesia on the skin yes. and then dry it and then put the tape over it if people have issues with sensitivity. So those are my two um, ideas for Sandy, Sandy's question. Yeah. Yeah, so, so she's right. So, so oftentimes I primarily use like some rubbing alcohol. I usually use like the menthol uh, scented one. So it's a little gentler, um, but some people don't want the alcohol in there. So milk and magnesia works really well. Once you prep that area, you know, that's, that's the only way that tape's really gonna stay down. But here's the thing. I, I, I know when people put olive oil on there or they'll, um, or they'll even tell them to just get into the shower and really slowly roll it down. If the tape is applied correctly, and it's worn for three to five days. After that third day, it's going to come right off. It's really, I mean, it's, I tell you what, even in classes that we do, we'll put tape on and we'll take it off 20 minutes later. The tape, it, it, the tape should come off pretty easily without too much of a problem. However, there are brands of tape that are out there that they, they'll emphasize, oh, we have a very strong adhesive. We've made our adhesive extra strong. You can even apply it over hair. Oi, vey. Okay, it's not supposed to go over hair. So why are we adding more adhesive to it to begin with? So it's that adhesive is going to become irritating to that person eventually if they're wearing it, especially if most taping applications, you're going to have to get them retaped a few times. So think about that extra strength adhesive on your skin for four weeks. That's not a good thing. You want to make sure you have a brand of tape that's got a nice gentle adhesive that every three to five days, you can take it off, clean the area, you can retape it again. So every so often, depending upon the person, I might wait a day or two in between tapings so their skin can kind of rejuvenate a little bit. But otherwise, if it's a problem taking that tape off, the tape's probably the problem. It's not necessarily your skin or the applicator. You got a bad roll of tape or bad brand of tape, whatever it might be. Trunk tape. Um, yeah, trunk tape, exactly. <laughs> okay, the last question from Xavier again, and thank you, is yeah. pre-existing tape an issue for the therapist doing a massage without taping certification, or can they work over it? Pre okay, I see what you're saying. So you're saying if a client comes in basically and they've already have their shoulder taped, can I work over that area? No, I, well, yes, you could. Technically you could, you can work around the area. Um, I would just ha have them take it off or assist them in taking it off because these are your hands your hands are going to do, I think, better work than the tape is going to do in that moment. It's when they leave, they might want to get retaped by you. And if you're not certified, and you know how to do it. You can't retape them. So send them back to the person who taped them to complement the work that you just did. You know, you are a team, you're a healthcare team. So take advantage of that. But if you feel like, if they feel like, oh no, I don't, I don't want you taking this tape off. It feels so good. 
then I would steer clear of their shoulder or maybe just do some mobility exercises and other work around that, whatever the condition might be to not remove the tape. But ultimately, if, when somebody comes in and they're I'm going to take their tape off so I can do my hands-on work first, then I'll reapply the tape. All right, and Kathleen has one last question here. Here, I think I get to the last question. I see another. But they can do self-lymphatic massage over the tape application. Absolutely. Absolutely can. Yep. All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up with the chats. Um, before we totally close this out, I want to just thank everyone for participating. Tomorrow, again, once Drew's um, recording is posted to the website, we'll send out the follow-up email. It will have the recording link. It will have a handout um, from Drew's presentation, um, which is very informative. At the end of the handout, Drew is making an offer, and I'm not going to tell you what that is so you can um read the uh um, take me home for christmas no, I'm kidding. Yes, I'm kidding. yes that's <laughs> it um so you can be lucky enough to win drew no so anyway <laughs> there is an offer at the end of the handout um uh, i can't believe it this year has flown by and next week we're we're bumping it up till next week december 14th we have an edu talk with sandy dirks and edith whitaker and it's a really good topic. It is on self-care, which is very important for therapists. And it's how trigger points plus stretch plus corrective exercise equal reduced muscle pain and tension. And she'll demonstrate some exercises. It looks like it's gonna be a great one. And um, again, self-care is something so important for therapists. That brings us to 2022. And um, an amazing lineup for next year. Kathleen, who was just on uh, the screen, um, will be presenting in January. But before her uh, is January 11th with Heath and Nicole Reed. They will present Thai yoga massage medley, Thai wooden stick, Thai herbal compress, and Thai table stretches. So that's January 11th. And RSVPs will open after next week's Edu Talk with Edith. At Edith and Sandy. Then January 25th, Kathleen um, will be presenting, and I think this is an interesting topic as well, post-operative massage following plastic surgery. So uh, that's a great one. Kathleen has also done an author series, which is on the Biotone website on the topic. So I would encourage you to um, join us again in 2022. Join us next week for um, the trigger point stretch and corrective uh, exercises with Sandy and Enid. And with all of that, thank you again for joining us. And I think that's it. I think I'm talked out. But yeah, Drew, thank you guys very much. Thank you very much for showing up and, and spending your Tuesday evening with me. Uh, my email address is right there and my name up there, but it's also going to be in the handout and the information you get. By all means, if you had questions that you didn't ask or weren't answered or thought of tonight when you're in the middle of the night while you're sleeping, shoot me an email. I'm happy to discuss it with you, help you out any way I can. Thank you that's very great. much for joining me. Yeah. Okay. And that's Drew at Learn to Tape. Thank you so much, everyone. And have a good rest of your evening. We'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye.